Hello and welcome back. My name is Raymond Crystal and today we are going to talk about how to use the motion tracker. So here we have in front of me a scene that we're going to try to recreate. It's in 3D space as you can see and it's just something that I created in the motion tracker and we'll uh, try to replicate this. So let's uh, get into it. Okay, so here's our new composition and let's start. The first thing that I recommend is you go to your layout and you make your layout into the motion tracker layout. This is just easier to work with and all the buttons are all where they need to be. They have here at the bottom, they have on the top. Everything is made for motion tracking. The next thing you would do is we're going to go to the bottom corner and we're going to hit motion tracker. And there we go. A motion tracker tab comes up on the right in your objects tab. You have a solved camera and down below you have your attributes. In your attributes you have footage settings. We're going to add our footage. I recommend that when you import your footage try to make sure that it's in a JPEG sequence. It's just much easier for Cinema 4D to understand and process. So here's the footage just me and a friend running in Costa Rica and you can see the quality is it's not a hundred percent that's because the resampling is gone to 33.333 percent that's just default i recommend pumping that up all the way to 100 now you can see the footage is back to normal which is great all right so now next once you've done that is to go and create a background object and that'll come at the top over here it'll create a background and it'll create your texture with it we'll use that later so you can actually hide it for now now we're going to go down to the 2D tracking tab at the bottom in your attributes and there you're going to have a whole bunch of settings. You can automatic track, you can manual track and you have options. Then you have number of tracks. These are the number of tracks that are going to be added into the scene. I like to go for a thousand to start off with and let's see how that goes. Okay, so in 2D tracking you have the options tab. Now here you can put your default pattern size. I like to go for around 25. You can play with it and see what best suits you. And search size to around 100. That's just a search option, the search size, which will be just a little bit increased. You can play around with these depending on your footage and what you're looking for. All right, now let's um, go for the track. So we go back to automatic tracking. I like to keep my playhead in the middle because unidirectional it will go both ways. So let's hit that. And there you go, there are all our tracks. If you would like, you can go to the motion track graph up here and you can see all your points. Red means the track isn't that good and green means the track is stable. And as you can see, there's quite a few. You can come in and manually start deleting some of them if you want. Once we're done, we can go to 3D Solve in the Attributes tab check all our settings if you know what you shot your video on you can put that all in or if not just leave it at default and hit run 3d solver okay once the 3d solver has complete you can come up to have a look and you can even look at your motion track remember we had that solved camera now look there's all the dots they have been given so they all got circles very stable circles as you can see look at that looks pretty right <laughs> If you undo your camera view, you will see your whole setup. There you go. You see, you can actually see that those are the trees. Those are the bad tracks far out at the back. And you can see if you push play, the camera is moving exactly in correspondence. Now we need to create a plane. And in order to do that, you've got to go to your motion tracker, right click, tracker tags, planar constraint. You click on the tag, you'll see that you're going to have to add three selections. There's the three triangles, three points. Click on your solved camera, make sure you're on the move tool, and then click on one dot and start putting them in the right position. Let's go with this dot to see if it's snapped into place. You can click on the tag and you'll see there in the selection that it has been selected. Click again for the next dot and set it. See if it accepted. There you go. The third dot click, bring it down and put it over, let's go with that one and it connected. Now you can just see your plane looks stable. I could actually move that third one up a bit. I think let's go with this one. 
think that could be a better one. All right, once that's done, you hit create plane, and there's your plane. Now, we need to put the plane in the right position. So what you have to do is you click on your plane. All right. So R for rotate. Just put it in the position where you think it's going to be. Then you can stretch it. And there you go. A plane is where it should be. Okay, we're going to hide that. I like to bring this down and keep my stuff in order. Uh, we'll just hide that for now. Uh, a nice thing to do is to create a mesh so you can actually you can see what's going on. So you go down to your recon your attributes tab in your reconstruction, your preset make the high quality and generate point cloud. Okay, so once it's done, you go to your motion track, you see it'll add a scene point cloud mesh. And in order to see that, you can just take out of the camera and there you go. You can see your point mesh. Look at that. See, it tries to create everything so it's easier for you to understand where you place your objects and it's just very, very useful, especially in this situation. See, there's a little bit of an error there with some of the land going up instead of it should be down, but it's okay for now. All right, so back to it. Another thing you can do is you can go to your motion tracker, right click, and you can, depending on your scene, what you should is add position constraint. So this will, this little dot will be the place when you add an object where the object will fall. So you can put it, let's say, on this dot. So for example, if I add a cube, the cube will fall at that dot. I add something else, it'll just fall at that dot. And you can just, just for example, click play. You see, and it's stuck. How cool. Okay. Okay, so now let's add in our object, but I'm going to take it from our old scene. Shortcut V, projects, go to your other project. We're going to take our clapping hand puppet, control C, V to go to our next project, boom, and control V, and there he goes. And he falls just into place. Look at that. We play. So the mesh is a bit funny, this one, so I'm going to remove it for now. I don't need to see it. When I do, I can always bring it back. Another cool thing you can do is when you want to preview stuff, in your, I'm not sure what version you're using, but in the new S24, you can go to Filter, Geometry Only. So when you play, you're only going to see the geometry. But as you can see, there's still no shadows. you still got to add your shadows, make sure you're playing as a shadow catcher, and so forth. But for this tutorial, we're just showing how to motion track and get an object into your scene and seamlessly look like it's part of the track. As you can see, it's a good track. There's no shifting, seems real. Now all you'd have to do is just uh, get in, do a lot of texturing. You know, you could add many other things, for example. So let me just give you another example, just so you could have a let's just put the geometry back on let's say for example you wanted to add a cube we scale the cube and just put it there we will push c to make it editable w m w just to make like a little split there d pick it up w And okay, so just like a little pillar there, and here we go. See, yeah, so that's it. Um, I hope that I helped you with a little bit of knowledge on the basics here. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments. 
um, I would love to help or try to. If you think that you can help me in any way, I would love to take any advice from any of you. And if you want anything that you'd like me to try and do some tutorials on for you, I'd be more than happy. Thank you for your time and enjoy.